checking. I am checking in. Welcome. Oh, last time you and I were together, we got my Creality Ender 3 V2, AKA Summer Intern, standing upright and proud. But there's still some issues and minor inconveniences that I want to address. Namely, first layer adhesion. But after installing these upgrades, I've finally found the consistency that I've been looking for. And in fact, it's so good, I just send the print straight from my Octopi. I don't even check the bed. So let's jump in. I'm having some issues with first layer adhesion. Turning my $20 rolls of filament into $20 balls of plastic. Oh! This is not how this is supposed to work, you slag! I'm the one that's supposed to waste my money, not you! So it's time to ditch this glass bed for good. So my original idea for the shot was to shoot the glass bed in midair and have it break apart like fireworks. But I guess I completely overestimated the effect a sharpened piece of metal shot at 1200 feet per second would have on a piece of glass. But lo and behold, this is one tough cookie. But back to the task at hand. PEI sheets. Better for first layer adhesion, final part removal, and my fleeting sanity. There's a couple of varieties of PEI sheets, but the big question at the very top of the stack is, smooth or textured? There's pros and cons to both, like using a textured sheet leaves a texture on the bottom of your part. There's also practical differences as well. I'm not gonna go too much into the gritty nitty because frankly, there's a ton of variability with different types of filament being used from different manufacturers. But here's some of the highlights. PEI sheets will cool down after printing and self-release your part from the bed. But they're also flexible so you can bend the bed to remove the part that way. It also allows you multiple options of bed surfaces, smoother textured, etc. And specifically with the Ender 3, you can finally use the full bed size because you don't need those clips anymore to hold the stock glass bed in place. Now, this may be a spicy take, but I'm partial to the textured plates because they seem to be a little bit less finicky for me. I pretty much use textured plates exclusively across my printers, slap some glue stick in there, and I found that I'm good for everything from PLA to TPU and nylon. But again, your use cases and results will certainly vary. In the last video, we installed this 515 fan, and boy does this thing blow. Absolutely amazing for cooling these gnarly overhangs, but utterly destructive to the bottom of my part. Now, the excess of cooling has left me with curling edges, which is absolutely no bueno. Inside Prusa Slicer, I made a custom profile that turned down the massive blower until it's really needed. But how much cooling do you actually need? Well, less than you may think. Maybe with the 410s, you can get away with running the fan throughout the print. But leaving the 515 on just causes the part to cool way too fast and detach from the bed. This is my custom profile inside Prusa Slicer for Summer Intern, using PLA and PETG. And so far, this has worked out perfectly for me. It's got amazing first layer adhesion and great exterior qualities. Fans are turned off except for the dynamic fan speeds that change how fast the fan is running based on the degree of overhang or the overlap. So again, curling edges, check your cooling. An unlevel gantry will screw up your parts, creating lopsided prints or causing the entire print to fail. Dual Z-axis installation helps tremendously by removing the cantilever on the stock under three. But one issue I kept running into was my gantry being slightly unlevel after changing the filament. And here's why. Applying downward force to the left side of the gantry, where the extruder is, causes that side to sag disproportionately to the right side. So when I was holding open the spring clamp that meshes the extruder gears together, I was also pushing down on that side of the gantry, causing that side to sag. So let's fix this. Before we begin, I like to level my gantry against the surface the printer is on and the bed. This helps to keep everything consistent, especially when tramming the bed afterwards, which should be done after you level your gantry. So here's the fix. 
these anti-backlash screws go into your Z-axis lead screws. The tension in the screw against the mount keeps it from falling down. It makes it nearly impossible to push the gantry down by hand. So we're gonna install these. A couple of quick things to note. These nuts need to be completely locked together when the spring is in the middle for this to work. And this is how it's supposed to look on the Z axis. Also, don't forget to apply some grease. A little bit of grease here goes a long way. Run your gantry all the way up and down to disperse the grease and boom, you're ready to go. And maybe don't forget to retighten the lead screw motor coupler. And finally, a custom case. I'm working on some more external changes to Summer Intern that are coming up in the next videos. So we're gonna replace the stock screen holder with a custom one that I designed. Mm. There's something about making the printer print its own part that seems uh, inhumane? No, that doesn't make any sense. Mm. Maybe cruel and unusual? So I designed this custom case for the LCD screen that works on the stock mount because I like the screen being flush and showing off these exposed metal edges. And I think it'll ultimately match better with the future style that we're going for. And I also made this custom knob for the dial selector. I printed it in two color schemes, but I think I know which one I'm gonna go with. So that's it. For those of you that are still watching, maybe consider sticking around. We've got a bunch of videos in the works focused on building this Ender 3 out, but also some other things as well that we're excited to present. So anyway, I hope you learned something and thanks for watching. Oh, and here's another time lapse.